Hey everybody, it's Jason Will. Just want to take a quick second to remind you that my Impact Agent University conference is happening this April 11th and 12th, 2019 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Get your tickets at impactagentuniversity.com and use promo code JASON10 for a 10% discount off your tickets. Ready? Ready to rock and roll? Is that action? All right. Okay. Oh, that's right. All right. Absolutely. Go. 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 Hello, everybody. It's Jason Will with Go. 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 This is a real estate podcast, but but we talk about leadership, personal growth, and becoming the best version of yourself. Leadership, check one, two, check one, two. Grow the best version of yourself. Go, go, go. So this is a real estate podcast. Welcome to the Impact <laughs> Agent Podcast. Oh, I'm so excited. I yeah. have no idea. I'm the guest speaker. We're going to try something Just like really kind of off the wall kind of crazy today. And that has to do like a live 30-minute coaching session before our weekly Jason Wood Real Estate team meeting. So we got 30 minutes. Like Let's get you there. all introduced to the audience. So your name is Courtney Osborne. Correct. You go by Coco. Yes. Where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born and raised in New Orleans. In the New Orleans city proper, because everyone wants to know that. And if you're from New Orleans, you want to know what high school you went to. So I went to Ursuline Academy. Awesome. All girls Catholic school. And I have been an Alabama licensed realtor since 2011. But as you know, I just joined your team at the end of 2017 Mm -hmm. after spending 10 years working for a resort developer in a very niche market for class A motor coaches in Foley, Alabama. Yeah, we actually met one day when I got lost. Yes. Yeah, that was odd. Mainly with on my part. First impressions. Yeah. Were great. Memorable. <laughs> <laughs> do you know any real estate agents in New Orleans? I do. A few, yes. Are we going to um, put pressure on those agents to come to Impact Aging University Conference? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So if we your should. fans are listening, they need to go to impactaginguniversity.com and buy tickets. And how much are tickets? Uh, we're, we're BOGO right now. So it's buy one, get one. It's five ninety nine for your basic ticket. And it is eight nine nine for, um, the VIP ticket. So what basically is, that's 300 each for basic. What does VIP get you? VIP gets you into Sharon Sharata's, uh, billionaire billion dollar, excuse me, billion dollar listing presentation mastermind. That's two sessions, Thursday and Friday. So Thursday is going to be, he's going to be presenting the presentation. And then Friday, we're going to do a Q&A and really go through some things to make sure everybody's got it down rock solid. You also get VIP access to the speakers. So you get backstage access to get selfies and just, you know, a little bitty quick little coaching sessions and stuff. So it's going to be pretty cool. Did I uh, see that Tom Ferry himself is going to be there? Tom Ferry himself is going to be there. That's really exciting. But I wanted to talk to you specifically about quarter four, 2018. Yes. So you had a little bit of a breakthrough. Can you tell us what was going on maybe Q3 leading into Q4, like financially and what was going on with your business and stress and anxiety and all that? So I felt like I was doing a fairly good job throughout the summer of building up my business. And and then in August, I had the biggest month I had in terms of closings and volume. And I made the top 10 for the company, which was very exciting. So I think I had seven closings in that month, which had taken roughly two to three months to work into a pipeline. And then August was so busy keeping those contracts together that I think I was just sort of on a high from making top 10 and feeling very successful. I didn't intend to, but I just became a little bit complacent. I lost track of the system that is we have to maintain every day in terms of prospecting at least two hours a day and keeping a regular schedule of open houses and just being very proactive in working to keep the pipeline full. So unfortunately, through the the decrease of activity of my own part, I only sold one home in September, one home in October and then only one home in November and that was not enough for us to my husband and I for us to really meet our financial needs my husband teaches second grade so I've always not just supplemented our income but really been the breadwinner and it put us in a stage where I was afraid of not being able to pay my mortgage and 
do I really have to tell all the deep, dark, secret parts? Well, you had to dip into, we can just say you you had to dip into your savings. Correct. Yes. Just to pay my mortgage, which was very alarming and very disappointing. And the only thing that I can look back and know that I failed at was just keeping my own system, not, you know, I became complacent. So it was all my own fault. It wasn't a result of a slow market or slow activity. It was a lack of me not putting forth the adequate effort. So a big part of coaching is reflecting on where you kind of missed it and where you, you know, where you, how you got off the rails. So what happened? It seems like you've done a good job at self-reflection to look back at what happened and you figured it out. You, I wonder if when you were on that high, you thought, well, I've turned a corner, corner it's going to get start getting a little bit easier for me now. Like things are just going to start to happen. Right. I've got this big momentum and it's going to carry me through to the end of the year. And what really happened was the exact opposite. So I think it's important to point out to folks that are listening that just how crucial it is to be purposeful and intentional with every single day because it cost you um, three three months, two Mm -hmm. months. You had two or three months with one closing. Three months straight. Three months straight with one closing. I mean, that's powerful. Every 90 days for a real estate agent is the predictor for the following 90 days. Right. And so you kind of got lulled into that high where you thought maybe things were going to start to come easy and, and they didn't. Yes, I see a lot of very seasoned agents that, you know, I don't see necessarily prospecting, but they have the benefit of having um, a lot of referrals from past clients. They have a, a deep involved sphere of influence, friends and family and acquaintances. And I'm, I haven't been in the business in terms of single family residential sales as a full independent contractor status for much more than a year. So I don't have that benefit of you know, seasoned referrals to fall back on. And that was a rude awakening when I realized that I was not prospecting. I was not calling enough to strangers or trying to put myself in front of new people. I, I guess felt that it was just going to come, um, just because I have such a vivacious energy. Right. And you certainly do. So what, What were some of the triggers that caused you to, number one, maybe change your mindset and also change your behaviors? Well, so I'm on your team, which as you know, but maybe listeners don't know, and we're ranked number one in our MLS, which is, you know, a very highly regarded status. And I realized that for me to keep my place on the team, we're supposed to be closing two homes per month. And I was at risk of potentially being on the chopping block. And so our team leader, Megan, implemented a new system, which was not directly, you know, to benefit me, but all of the other team members that have not had consistent flow. She introduced the quartile system, which basically is a segment of four places within our team and depending on your past business and your closings determines where you are in the quartile, which put me down to quartile two, which is basically near the bottom. And it required me to have four hours a week logged on Mojo, which is our multiple line speed dialer, as well as at least two hours in the office every day prospecting as well as turning in daily sheets of accountability showing what I did with each day, which some people may think is micromanaging. For me, as evidence of that slow period, I know that I benefit from accountability. So I never felt as though it was a punishment. I knew that the purpose was she, and hopefully you saw my potential and knew that I was not producing to the level that I could. So three months of being in Q2 steadily required that I also hold an open house every weekend or essentially four open houses a month. So I knew that I could do back to back Saturday, Sundays and still have, you know, a Sunday off. But through all of that extra effort, it just really started to to come together um, to the point where in November, well, actually in December, I went under contract for seven homes which I had never had that level of business in the entire time that I had been on the team. 
And those seven homes don't close for another 30 to 60 days, so that's not immediate income in my pocket. But fortunately, I did have a good closing in December, which helped us to get through Christmas. And I think my biggest challenge now is not to focus on that success, but recognize any one of those contracts can fall through at any moment. And if I don't continue to focus on keeping the pendings populated on my database, then I could be in this situation again in March and April. Before I want to get to accountability, but before I do, I want to talk about maybe the pain of having to pull that money out of savings actually made your mindset a little bit more receptive to the accountability and to like just open your mind to like whatever you think I need to do to get back on track, I'm willing to do. Absolutely. I felt as though I was ready to be putty in anyone's hands where if you just told me what was going to solve the the downtime, then I was willing to do it. And you all have always preached that real estate is truly a numbers game. You've got to stay on the phone. You've got to have so many conversations per day. You've got to stay relevant in front of, in front of your, your client base. Um, I guess I just didn't, I, I felt more as though I could rely on luck and just, you know, positive engagement every day with just people on the street. But that's, that's not the way it works. Um, I really know that if I am going to keep a consist- consistent business, I've got to be in the office every day spending at least two hours calling people that I'm not yet working with. Yeah, and I think, you know, in terms of like goals and motivation, um, you know, I was at a mastermind in California this past weekend and there were several um, really kind of deep thoughts and, you know, one liners that were delivered. But, you know, one thing that we can instill in people is a desire and goals and what motivates people, what drives people, their big why essentially a lot of times is attached to pleasure. What do they want? You know, what experience do they want? And it's becoming increasingly clear to me that it's really the pain that's going to trigger the motivation. You know, it was the pain of you having to pull that money out of savings. It was the pain of being on the chopping block and being at the bottom of production and being in Cortel too that really triggered you and said, you know, I'm better than this. I'm more, I'm, I'm capable of being in a higher quartile. I'm capable of consistently maintaining that top 10 ranking. And it's funny, you know, if we, if we ask 20 people to tell us like, what, what do they really want? You know, uh, the majority of those people would just kind of scratch their heads and go, I don't really know, or give me a minute to think about it. But you ask them what they don't want. Like, I don't want financial stress. You know, that, that don't want is really top of mind. And I think that's, you know, kind of what happened with you. The other point I wanted to make is about accountability. And you talked about how important that is, but also briefly touched on how a lot of real estate agents in particular look at it as maybe a negative. It has a negative connotation to it, a a micromanagement connotation to it. And John Chip, like I, I, I think, you know, has said it the best when he said that accountability is the highest form of love you can show another human being. Because the things that you're being asked to do on the team and being asked to do through accountability are things that are going to make your life better. Like, you know, that are going to improve your quality of life. Right. Because money is good for the good it can do. And we're in the business of making money and money funds the perfect life and reduces stress. It's not the answer to all our problems, but it certainly is the catalyst for a lot of good things that, that can happen in our, in our businesses. So in this, if for the people out there listening, and, I, and I've had some people ask me, like, what's the number one thing I can do to make sure that 2019 is my best year in real estate or in sales or whatever field you're in? That's fine an accountability partner. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody that you don't want to disappoint. And for you, maybe that was your husband. I don't know. You know, like I can do this. Maybe it was just some people are so driven, it's themselves. Like they just have this internal drive that's, you know, not going to let them go. How is your momentum looking going into Q1 of 2019? 
So um, I now have eight pendings. I got another pending last week and I have two clients that are ready to purchase and we have written a few offers but just have not been able to come to terms. Either we ended up in a multiple offer situation or we just have not found the right home. So I am feeling very optimistic about rather than just meeting my quota of two sales for January, I'm hoping to end the month with at least three or four new contracts in January. And when I look back at the heavy hitters that have been on our team and have since either left or are still on the team, they are the ones that are consistently not meeting the minimum quota of two sales per month. They're the ones that are exceeding and reaching for four to six contracts per month. And some of them have you know, since left the team to become independent agents. And my goal for this year is to step into one of their shoes to help us keep our placement and our ranking as number one in the MLS because I know that I'm capable of it and I don't need just one accountability partner. Obviously, my husband certainly enjoys when we don't have to stress about our bills, but he, there's also the challenge where he's got to step up and, and be more of the Mr. Mom when I'm out with clients late or working on the weekends. I love our team environment because I don't have just one accountability partner. I've got 15 and I don't want to let the new agents down that have just joined our team in the last few months. I want to show them that I'm not impervious to having downfalls in my business. And it's really important to, you know, really stay on top of the daily activity. Um, but I also want to make our, our veteran agents on our team, as well as those that have left the team over the last few months, you know, show them that I've learned from their experience Anyway, and obviously to you too, I don't ever want to feel like I'm the weakest link. Obviously, somebody's always at the bottom. So when that time comes that someone is, I hope that I can help to positively influence them and remind them that it's just a temporary status. Yeah, I think you've made a really strong case for being on a real estate team that is, you know, led with purpose and intention and how the, when you've got a culture of productivity on a team, how that can, everybody can, all the members can just feed off of that. Agents that are listening who are independent agents who are suffering, they're just, they're obviously not getting the accountability they need, whether that's from more of a, a, a broker owner manager or an office team leader or their friend who is their, happens to also double as their accountability partner. So, and you've seen a lot of these agents who have left our team go on to be very, very strong independent agents. And that accountability is instilled within them and they're taking it with them and seeking it elsewhere. Um, and so uh, I think that's critical for their long-term success. But, you know, you see a lot of agents who, you know, just don't want to be on a team or it, in addition to teams, they could hire a coach mm -hmm. and they don't want to hire the coach because of the, you know, number one, probably the money it costs. And number two, they know that coach is going to hold them accountable. But I think we have to face a really clear and crisp distinction in terms of where you are now and where you want to be. And for me, the, the realization is, is that it's never going to get easy. And, and you, your time at the end of you know, the summer 2018 taught you that it's never going to get easy. You know, you're never, there's no such thing as easy street. As long as you want to be the best possible version of yourself, it will just never get easy. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, you have to get comfortable with life being difficult. And then things actually, life, if you want life to be easy at all, you have to work your butt off. Uh, but taking the easy road always leads to anxiety, stress, you know, because if you're taking the easy road, you're just putting off what needs to be done. You're putting off your priorities that, you know, are essential to moving the needle. Um, Craig Ballantyne has an awesome quote. He says, action beats anxiety. And I think about a team that's struggling or a brokerage that's struggling because of recruiting and the team leader or the broker or the, you know, the manager is all stressed out. 
you know, it's because they haven't taken action to make those connections, build those relationships with agents, take them to coffee appointments, take them to lunch, put on, you know, trainings for these agents. So really this could be a huge takeaway for, you know, agents that are listening to, to realize that, that action beats anxiety. Would you agree? Absolutely. I know that one of the things that I was feeling in terms of the lack of action, I know um, one thing that really struck fear in me was the idea of door knocking. And so during that fall period, I did my own Coco Challenge where I um, put it out on Facebook that every day for 10 days straight, I was going to knock on at least 10 doors of community members right in my farm area, which means where I live, which is Old Town Daphne, an area that I one day want to be the resource that people think of. That's not going to happen this year and it won't happen next. I'm hoping that it won't take any less than five, but I need to be intentional. So the the biggest thing that just really strikes, um, I'll be honest, jealousy inside me is when I see a home within a stone's throw of my own home that is listed with another agent. That drives me to want to get out and let people know who I am, get better connected with them on a personal level, become very involved in activities and philanthropy that focuses on that area to serve my neighbors and hopefully one day my clients. And so after 10 days of, of doing that, not only did it just you know, show hopefully anybody that may, have, may still be thinking of me as a new agent that I've got drive and I've got grit, also to just connect with some people. And through that experience, I did make a connection with at least two people who are hoping to list their home over the next year. So now my focus needs to be on just maintaining that connection and the follow through. You talked about self-discipline with a lot of independent agents and there are several that I can name that I really admire because you never have to worry if they are calling their clients, if they're working hard. You know, the folks that you always see in here that sign up for agent on duty, that are always volunteering to host First Friday Art Walk, they're successful because they have their own drive and they're able to do that as an independent agent. I know that that's a weakness for me. And I also just enjoy being social. So, and I enjoy the competition of our individual team. So I've seen since joining the team that the agents that stay on the team, it's the second and the third year when they really start to gain major traction and leverage within their communities and within their their client database because that's when the referrals start to really come in from their past clients. What were you mentioning as your weakness? Self-discipline. Self-discipline. Okay. So I think you made a really, really good point in terms of the public declaration. So if you need extra motivation, drive, self-discipline, accountability, Putting a public declaration out on Facebook saying, hey, this is the challenge. This is what I've, you know, the goal that I've set for myself. This is what I'm going to do. And I need everybody on Facebook to hold me accountable to that. I don't think people realize just how powerful making a public declaration like that can be. I mean, did you think in the back of your mind, like I've made this public declaration. If I don't follow through with it, people are going to question my drive, my grit. Yes, because I would roughly about the same day do the Coco challenge. And before I would start it, I would share the stats and the feedback from the day before. And each day was terrifying for me, but I've just had to take a deep breath. And I remember hearing Mel Robbins say that in the moments of panic, just count down from five as you're getting ready to do it and then just do it. And there were no terrible experiences throughout the my Coco Challenge. Um, all of them were fruitful. But most importantly, the fact that I just did it and could sign off that day and then know that I had feedback to share the following day was very powerful for me. That that was my self discipline. Yeah, and I would you know, going back to the action beats anxiety, I would imagine when you wound down that day, you felt pretty good about the work you put in. After I knocked on the first door, it was smooth sailing for the next nine. <laughs> yeah, and you could you could say, listen, if somebody 
Yeah, I heard this at one of my trainings early on as a, as a new agent that, you know, the instructor said, if, if I hired a camera crew to follow you around all week long, and then I put a little movie together and we sat down with some popcorn and watched it with your family, would you be proud of what we saw? Oh, wow. And that's when I was like, holy crap. You know, because at that point in time, I was completely lost. I would wake up every day and wonder, how am I going to generate income? I did not know what to do and, and how to do it. And the things that I saw other people doing scared me to death. So big procrastinator, huge avoidance syndrome. And that led to tons of anxiety and stress. And I like to say that I was you know, staring down the barrel of failure and lived to tell about it. And one of the things that got me through was being learning based. So like hearing you talk about, you know, Mel Robbins and I would just take a time out to say, you know, kudos to anybody listening to this podcast. Kudos to anybody who's got a, a healthy audible, who's committed to either reading or listening to books, you know, watching webinars, going to things like impactagentuniversity.com, real estate conference in New Orleans, Louisiana, April 11th and 12th, 2019. Would be an <laughs> excellent idea. But just how important this stuff is, because look, you're calling on like Mel Robbins is like a digital, uh, you know, virtual mentor for you. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about, we've got a few more minutes left is that one thing that you have really never been shy about is you know building your social media presence. And I think that is crucial. But I think what we've kind of proven here is that you can't leave behind the fundamentals. You can't you know neglect the fundamentals, I'd say. And, and the social media and digital marketing cannot replace you know, your, dollar, your fundamental dollar productive activities. There is going to, and you still haven't stopped. You know, you, you're staying out there in creative ways. And I think people, especially, most especially agents who not are new to real estate, but that want to build up their celebrity in the marketplace, their online presence, their top of mind awareness should be following you on Facebook. So they should friend request you and follow you so they can see what you're doing because you've got a lot of great ideas and all they need to do is R&D that in their own market. And it just gets, sometimes just seeing people with that creative process get your own creative juices flowing. And you can see that. So you said R&D, and I remember one of the first times you made that phrase, I had to better understand what that meant, which is repeat and duplicate. And you're absolutely right. Um, I, I don't even utilize so many of the great memes and graphics that we already have in our ecosystem that are available, um, mainly just because, well, first of all, I just haven't taken the time to save some of them, but I always want to try and be original and um, authentic in my, my social media posts. And before joining the team, I think I spent more time on Facebook as a voyeur, just kind of, you know, seeing what people were doing, sharing occasional photos of family and just fun. But in the meantime, that resort developer that I mentioned and that I worked for for 10 years, I did a great deal of work marketing and advertising for them and their, their product. So one of the things that incentivized me or excited me about your team was seeing some of the people that I already knew on the team and how exciting and fun they made things look and how engaged they were in social media. And that was a little scary at first. And then I realized, why am I so eager to promote someone else's product? And I have fear of promoting my own brand. And I just realized that I needed to check that fear at the door because people are always going to judge you. I might as well make money while they're judging me. Right. So. <laughs> That's great. I love that. And if, again, if I am authentic and, and really genuine and trying to provide value, then why, why should I have that fear of being judged if my true intention is to help and to inform? I think it could not be better stated. You can't, just to recap though, to make this point, you can't have, I don't think you can have one without the other. So in this day and age, if you're just gonna do the fundamentals, I think you're missing the boat big time. And if you're just going to lean on, you know, social media, digital marketing, social celebrity building, you're going to miss out by not having the fundamentals in place. Those systems and processes that really create the opportunities, the, the celebrity status, the social celebrity, 
I know that people makes people cringe. Like I don't want to toot my own horn. I don't want to put myself out there. And they, it's basic, basically fear is why they don't want to do it. But I think they use that as an excuse because it's just it's easy number one and number two they just think that it's superficial maybe to build your own celebrity but the fact of the matter is that the more your celebrity grows online the more you're going to win these opportunities because people are going to feel like they know you they're going to feel like they like you and they trust you before you even sit down at that at listing appointment or that buyer consultation you're going to be like, you're going to have this instant rapport. Right. And also when people are thinking about, you know, what agent they're going to hire, that realtor on the run slogan that you have is just going to be stuck in their mind. They're going to not be able to get it out. So um, I think these are really, really good points because one of the top things I think that agents are struggling in our industry is building their brand on social media. And this is like the biggest gift that could ever be given to anybody that's in not only real estate, but sales or own their own business, small business owner, that this platform that social media has given us, it can be this hugely positive thing because what I see that can happen, we've talked about realtors that can R and D, you know, some of your pictures and, and graphics and things that you do, you know, your ideas, but it's going to inspire them. they are going to be like, wow, I can do that. You know, if she's doing it, I can do it, and therein lies all the justification for what you talked about, like the haters and the people that are going to, you know, have all this negative chatter. They're always going to be talking. You might as well be making money, as you said, and you might as well be inspiring people to, to follow in your footsteps sure. and just not pay attention to what everybody else is saying. So uh, I had intended this to be a little bit more of a coaching session, but it's obvious to me that you're very well coached <laughs> and you're doing a lot of things right. Really, I love the reflection and the self-reflection. To take own, just to take ownership, to take ownership of what you're doing wrong and where you're messing up. To own up to it. To own up to your, you know, own responsibility and the things you're not doing, and to keep moving forward. So that's right. huge. Well, Last and comment. to also point it out, I felt like I needed my my coaching team, you and our team leader Megan. I, I felt like I needed to to openly speak about it because. I do not want anyone to fear when they, if they see me slacking, if you see me slacking, I need you to be able to say, hey, Coco, remember what we last talked about? Without fear of me judging or being resentful because you're only saying those things to improve my business and to improve, you know, the consistency and so that I can keep a retirement account and not have to worry about my mortgage being paid. Well, it's, it's human nature. I mean, you're not going to be, you're not fixed. This incident that happened, end of quarter three, end of, in, uh, merging into the quarter four, that is just didn't straighten you out for life. I mean, accountability is something that you need, like you need to eat or like you need air. It's something that you constantly need on a daily basis. And there's going to be times in your career where you're going to have a bang up quarter or a bang up month. And you're gonna be riding high again. You're, you may get, may get a little overconfident. So you've just got to be receptive like that to the accountability. Everybody out there needs to realize that if somebody says, "Hey, I don't see you, you know, on the phone as much as I, you know, this month as you were last month. I don't see, you know, you producing this great content as much as you did last month." That's not to say like you suck. It's to say, listen. You're, you're better than that. Okay. You know you know what you need to do and you're not doing it. And that, again, going back to chip life, that's the highest form of love we can show each other because, you know, together we can achieve more. We're in this together. And the more we collaborate and encourage each other, the more we're all going to win. It's a great feeling to know that people around you believe in you and want the best for you and love you enough to tell you what's hard to say sometimes. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's real friendship. That's real for a chip. All right, so let's tell everybody out there uh, how they can get in touch with you if they want to buy, sell, or invest in a home on the Alabama Gulf Coast. Awesome. Okay, well, I work both Mobile and Baldwin County. And to reach me directly, call or text is 251-533-9043. Or you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, even Twitter, Courtney Fox Osborne. 
O S B O R N E. <laughs> there are a lot of different ways that you can spell that. Or just call our main office here in Fairhope, and Miss April at the front will help you get directly in touch with me. And that's two five one nine two nine four 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 four. Courtney Osborne, thank you so much. This has been really, really good, thank and I can you. guarantee you that members of this audience that are listening to this podcast, their lives and businesses will be changed by the the transparency, the insight, and just the, the knowledge that you share. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Impact Agent Podcast. If you like the show and got something out of it, please like Impact Agent Podcast on Facebook and rate and review the show on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. This really helps us grow the show and helps other agents find it. Please share it with your friends and coworkers as well. You want us to deliver the show to you via email every week? Then email me at jason at impactagentuniversity.com and we'll send you the show every week. Please let us know what you think about the show, what you like, what you don't, or possibly make a suggestion about a topic you want to hear. Email me at jason at impactagentuniversity.com or leave us a message on Facebook at Agent 251 Podcast. Until next week, everybody be productive, safe, and happy, and always keep learning. This podcast is produced by Johnny Gwynn at Deep Fried Studios in Mobile, Alabama, and is paid for and powered by impactagentuniversity.com.